In this video, we're going to introduce the idea of linear relationships, leading then to linear regression. So first, let's just say we want to examine the relationship between two variables. So we might ask something like, is lack of sleep associated with high stress? Or maybe we want to know, is there a relationship between the size of an ice cream carton and the price, etc. Okay, so association is a key word here. We say that two variables are associated if knowing the value of one variable tells you something about the value of the other variable. Now these variables should be measured on the same cases or person, meaning that if we want to look at the size of ice cream carton and price, we would look at the size of one carton and also the price of that carton. And then for another carton, we'll look at the size of that carton and the price for that carton. And we often ask if the variables have a linear relationship. So we want to know if this relationship could be described by a line. We have two kinds of variables. We have our response variable, which measures the outcome of the study. And then we have our explanatory variable, where we're trying to explain the changes in the response variable. Or, if you prefer x's and y's, y is going to be your response, and x is your explanatory. Now, sometimes we have an explanatory response variable in mind, and we know which one we kind of want to be able to predict. And sometimes we just want to see if there's a relationship. So like for Sherry's a college aid student, she looks at data on college graduates that and their stress levels to see if they're related. She's not trying to make predictions and so she doesn't really have a response and explanatory variable, so either one could be the X or Y. But Jim is a sociologist. He wants to use the amount of debt to explain the stress levels. So he wants to explain stress levels using debt. So the explanatory variable, what he uses to explain it would be the amount of debt. The response variable, what he's actually trying to explain, would be the stress levels. Then we have what's called scatter plots. So scatter plots are a special kind of graph that show the relationship between two quantitative, or remember quantitative means numerical, variables measured on the same individuals. So the explanatory variable goes on the horizontal x-axis. The response variable goes on the vertical y-axis. So again, x and y. Now, if there's not a specific explanatory or response variable, it doesn't really matter which one you put on which axis. Let's zoom out here and look at a few examples. So in this first one, we have botnets are used to send spam. Here's some data on the top botnets. So you can see on these botnets, it tells you the number of bots and then the number of spams per day they can send out. And you can see the scatter plot. So this point right here, had a, about 150 bots and about 30-ish spam. That must be this one right here, rest stock. 150 bots, 30 spams. Now what do we look for when we do something like this? We're looking for an overall pattern. So we might say, like, what's the shape of the pattern? What's the, what's the direction of the relationship? Okay, one of the things that that means we look for is which direction is the slope going if it was a line? So we say two variables are positively associated when high values of one variable occur with high values of the other variable. That means you'd be going up like this, so you'd have positive slope. Negatively associated means you are going down or you have a negative slope. And we'll ask things like, what's the strength of the relationship? And are there any data points that don't fit the data? Remembering that an outlier is an individual value that falls outside the overall pattern. So with that in mind, let's look at our botnet scatter plot again. Okay, so do our points seem to follow a pattern? pattern? Well, it seems to be fairly linear. I think it looks like it mostly follows the line. And we say it has a positive association because it's kind of going up. As you go to the right, you're going up. So positive association. And let's see, is there an outlier? So for this one, this is always kind of subjective. This point seems to be a little bit further from the line, so maybe this one's an outlier. But it's not so far off that I know for sure that it is an outlier. And how strong do you think the relationship is? So how close are these points to the line? Most of them are actually fairly close except for that one, but not incredibly close. But they're still not too far from the line. So I'd probably say 
fairly strong. Points are mostly close to the line. Okay. Now let's try another one. So here's our scatter plot of depths. Okay. Do the points seem to follow a pattern? Well, it seems very, very linear. And it's still a positive association because we're still going up as we move to the right. And I would say there are no outliers. Like those points are all so close to the line. Definitely no outliers. And how strong do you think the relationship is? I would say very, very strong. Those points are all very close to the line. Now in this next one, Forbes.com analyzed 120 countries. Two variables are unemployment rate and gross domestic product. So unemployment, gross domestic product, and they're trying to figure out if they can find a relationship. So when I look at these points, there does kind of seem to be a relationship, but it's curved. It's not a line. Okay, so definitely not a line. Now as far as is there a positive or negative association, even though there's not a line, we can still see as we come to the right, <coughs> we're going down. So we can still say it's a negative association. Now one of the things that you can do is you can try and transform data to make it a little more linear. So if you were to say take the log of all of your GDP values, then this looks a little bit more like a line. So this one now looks a little more linear but still not that linear. Okay. That's a little bit better. Now we're not actually going to learn how to transform data in this class. I just want you to know that it's an option. The next thing to know is correlation. So we want to be able to measure the linear relationship between two variables. And we call the relationship strong if the points are close to the line. So on these, let's just kind of see if we can eyeball it of which one seems stronger. Okay, so looking at these two, I would think this one, those points all kind of seem to be closer to a line if I was to draw a line in. Whereas these ones, the points are a little bit further apart. So I would say the first one is stronger. On the second two sets, let's see, I kind of have, there's my line, here's my line. I would say the second one looks a little bit stronger. But it turns out they have the same correlation. Now we haven't told you the definition of correlation yet, but we will soon. So correlation is a way that you measure the strength of the relationship. So they actually have the same correlation here. So it's kind of hard to tell by eye. And these last two, this one seems like it's closer to the line, but it's actually the exact same data set. I just changed the scale. So I wanted to emphasize here that you don't just want to try and measure the strength by looking out with your eyes. We want a more precise mathematical way to look at the strength of the relationship. And that's why we invented correlation. So correlation measures both the strength and direction of the linear relationship between two variables. This is your nice formula. You can look at this later. We're never going to do this by hand in my class. I don't like to make you do it by hand. Okay, we just use software. Now for correlation, there's a few things to know. First, it doesn't matter which variable is explanatory and which one's response. You'll get the same answer. You do have to have two continuous variables, though. The correlation interestingly enough, doesn't change if you change the units of measurement. So if you change from like measuring everything in feet to measuring everything in inches, that doesn't change your correlation. Now if you get positive values of your correlation, that indicates a positive association or positive slope between your two variables. And negative values of R indicate a negative association. And the correlation R is always going to be a number between negative 1 and 1. Now, if you get a correlation of 0, that would indicate that there's no relationship between your two variables. And if you get values of R close to 0, then that means you have a very weak linear relationship. 
But if you get values of r equals to negative 1 or positive 1, that indicates a very strong relationship. And so points close to negative 1 or positive 1 means that you're very close to a straight line. Now correlation is very influenced by outliers. Okay, just like the mean was very influenced by outliers, so is the correlation. If you have one outlier, you can throw it all off. And as a final note, you only use correlation to measure the strength of linear relationships. You can't use it for curves.